Hi, I am Pavel and I'm here to discuss a problem A S cubed reasoning. This problem is about a data structure named skew heap. In let's first talk what is this data structure. A heap is a tree for each each node it has a value bigger than its children. This typically allows us to find minimal values fast and insert and remove additional values to the heap. For, the, for this problem, we only insert values, so let's discuss how it works for skew heap, which is one of the ways of making this data structure fast. In a skew heap, when you need to insert a value, if this value is smaller than all you have, you just add it as a root node and add everything else as its last left subtree. Otherwise, you swap your left and right subtree with each other and insert new value recursively in the left subtree. Subtree. So let's check an example. We have a sum state of the heap and we insert a value 7 to it. First of all, we check whether 7 is the smallest value and it's not because the smallest value is 4, which is less than 7. That's why we, we swap its children, children of our root and insert it recursively into, into the next node. The next node is 5. 5 is still less than 7. That's why we again swap its children and insert recursively. Now we the new the new node is 11. 11 is bigger than 7. So we just add 7 and put everything else as a left subtree of our new no, of our new node. It can be proven that this leads to a good time on average, but it's not important for our problem. Uh, for our problem, we are given a specific result of n insertion operations. And we need to come up with an order, with an order to increase va insert values into our data structure to achieve that exact structure. In particular, we are interested to find whether it's possible at all. And if it's possible, we need to find lexicographically smallest and lexicographically largest permutation of values, which leads to this result. Uh, we will stick to finding lexicographically smallest one. Lexicographically largest is, can be done exactly the same, but each time when we choose the smallest version, we need to choose the largest, and that's the only change. So let's stick to minimal version. So first of all, let's notice that everything that's happening in our left subtree and in our right subtree is kind of independent. It's on, it only matters. So if we consider our order, our minimal value is inserted somewhere, and for everything else, it's only important which way, for, like for the left subtree, it's only important which values was inserted to the left subtree and in which order for the right subtree, it's important which values was in, and in which order was inserted to the right subtree, uh, but the order in the left subtree doesn't af affect the right subtree and vice versa. That allows us to minimize them independently. So first of all, we just do to so solve all both of our children's recursively and the question is how we merge the results. So when we merge the results, we have our minimal element. We have left subtree, which is some order. And we have right subtree, which is some other order. Let's try to figure out how we can merge this. For let, what, what is the last element which was inserted? By our algorithm, last element was definitely inserted to our left subtree. And we know which is the last element inserted here. So let's cancel it. So what's happened next? Well, so while inserting this element, we, add, we, we changed our trees, so we need to change them back to revert the separation. So what we can do is we removing last element from the left subtree and changing left and right with each other. After doing so some, several times, we would end up in the case when one of subtrees is ended. What, what does it mean? We have three options how this can happen. First of all, we can have our... our we can, we, can have, we can run out of left elements in the left subtree to remove. This is impossible because we can never achieve the situation where we have right subtree but no left subtree. Because always, because if some elements have anything in its subtree, it would be always in the left because we always insert in the left. So if we, at some point of our process, we finished with a case where there is now more elements in left subtree, but something is remaining in the right one, there is no solution, and that's it. The other case which can happen is we end up with, with one element and some untrivial tree in the left, which means that it has at least, one, at least two elements. 
This means that the last element which was inserted here was our minimal element, and then all elements from the left in their order, which means that they just this subtree was built, and then we inserted the minimal element and added it, and everything else is left subtree. And there is a one special case. When we add it up, end it with only one vertex in the left subtree, this means that we end it up with two vertices, and in, which, in whatever order we end them, we would end up with this subtree. So here we have two cases, and need to choose the one which is smaller or larger, depending on which of the problems we solve. So what we need to do, again, we just remove elements one by one, changing left and right, and when we run out of one of the lists, we know what's the answer for, for everything else. This immediately gives us quadratic solution, which, which do just the following. Solve left and right subtrees independently, and then merge them in linear time in procedure I just described. And in fact, if we write this solution careful enough, it can be done in n log n time. In n log n time. So how to do it? First of all, let's notice that we don't need to actually do anything with elements remaining in larger subtree. So when we remove elements one by one, instead of copying everything else in the end into new array, we can just keep them as is and remove elements which we touched and then just keep them, put them back in correct order. This would help us to merge elements not in the time proportional to sizes of, to sum of the sizes, which was described initially, but rather in the time proportional to minimum of the sizes, because we remove elements from the both si sides in, 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 in alternate order, and then one of them would get, would get exhausted in the minimum of time. And it's, it's well known that if we do merge things in the time proportional to the minimum, then each time when we put element to other set, its it, amount of elements in each set bec becomes at least twice larger, which can happen with each element no more than logarithmic number of times. So the total number of moves from one set to another would be n log n, which and it bounds our our total time because each time we move element we, only for each two two elements we processed the one of them would be moved to bigger set. And being careful with this, we can achieve n log n time, which is good enough for this problem. And for the second part, when we're asked for maximum permutation, we need to do exactly the same, with the only difference that in this case where we have a choice, we need to first insert maximal element and then minimal. That's it. Thank you.